Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching you how to make crochet shorts. I don't often make shorts, but it's about that season and I wanted some shorts to go with this cute sporty bra that I made, so win-win. Outside of the cables, these shorts are fairly simple and a quick workup, so if you're looking for the perfect weekend project, look no further. Speaking of, if you're looking for more weekend projects or something a little bit longer, we've got you covered. We've got hundreds of modern crochet designs with more coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 340 grams of yarn, not 650 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us which you prefer, waffles or pancakes. I don't think I've had a proper waffle, so I'd say I'm more of a pancake gal, but I'm open to being persuaded. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using six stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. Double crochet, treble crochet, and double treble crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting these shorts started, we are all going to grab our Category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 6mm hook and start off by making an even number chain, the width that is the widest part of our hips. So I've already measured mine out. I need a total of 25 inches or 65 centimeters, and that's going to be a chain of 100. And I'm just going to show you guys a really neat trick that I learned so that our chain doesn't twist. So let's all start by making a chain of 5. Now that we have our chain, we're going to pull some slack and pull our hook out. Next, we're going to insert our hook into that first chain that we made and then insert our slack loop onto our hook. And now from here, we're going to continue on with the chain that we need. I will meet you guys back once we have it all finished up. And I actually have my first row all finished, so I'm just going to be doing a sample size with you. So I am back, my sample size is all finished up, and now we're going to need to connect our chain. So what we're going to do is pull our first loop underneath our second loop, and now we are all connected and our chain shouldn't be twisted. Now our first row is going to be a double crochet row, so let's get that started. We're all going to start with a chain three, there's one, two, three. Now we're going to be putting one double crochet into every chain. So starting with the yarn over, we are going to insert our hook into that first chain. We may need to pull that first chain apart just a little bit. Insert your hook. From there, we're going to yarn over, pull through. Should have three loops on our hook, so we're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and that is our first double crochet. Let's just do one more. Yarn over, insert our hook into that following chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and continue to put one double crochet into every chain. Making sure that we're not counting our chain three, we should have the same amount of double crochets as chains made. I am back and I just made my way all the way around with my first double crochet row. And now we're going to slip stitch into that third chain that we made to close off this row. So first off, we're going to make sure that our work isn't twisted. And then we're going to start by counting up the three chains that we made when we start off this row. So here's one, two, three. Into that third chain, insert your hook, 
Once we have those two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, and now our row one is all complete. Now the ribbing that we're going to have for our waistband is going to be front and back post double crochets, so let's get that started. We're all going to start with a chain two. Now starting with our front post double crochet, we're going to yarn over and find the first double crochet from our previous double crochet row. So making sure that we're not counting that chain three, we're going to insert our hook underneath the body of that following double crochet. Now from here we're going to yarn over, pull through, we're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That is our first front post double crochet. Now let's do our following double crochet, which is now going to be in the back post. So yarn over, bring our hook underneath at work now, and then over that following double crochet. We're going to insert our hook in through that gap, over that following double crochet, pull through. We're going to pull through two, pull through two, and all together we should have a set, which is a front and a back post double crochet. Let's do this again. Yarn over, into that following double crochet, insert your hook underneath, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and then to do another back post, yarn over, insert your hook over that following double crochet, through the other side, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and then that's it. We're going to continue to do our front and back post double crochets, making our way all the way around. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I will meet you guys back just to close this row off together. And just as a quick tip, the last stitch that should be worked into this row should be a back post double crochet, since we should all have an even number of stitches. So my front and back post double crochet row is all finished up, and now I just need to finish off this row together. So similarly to how we closed off that first row, we're going to count up the chain two that we made when we started this row. So here's one, here's two, Insert your hook into that second chain, yarn over, pull through both loops, and now this row is all closed up. Now from here, we're just going to continue to repeat our previous row until we get the height that we want our waistband to be. So let's just get the first few stitches started. Now getting started on our front and back post double crochet row, we are always going to chain two. Now just working in the same direction that we were working in, we're going to yarn over and find that first stitch from our previous row. Now the first stitch should always be a front post double crochet since we aren't flipping our work, and we're just going to find that first stitch and then insert our hook underneath the body of that stitch, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, so the same as all of our other front post double crochets, and now back post, which is also going to be the same as the previous ones. So yarn over, insert our hook underneath the body of that following stitch, which should be a back post double crochet, pull through pull through two, pull through two, and as you guys can see, we're basically just extending the ribbing from the previous row. So let's just do the next set and let you guys finish up the waistband on your own. So yarn over, that next stitch should be a front post double crochet, insert your hook underneath, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and then yarn over, finding that next stitch, which should be a back post, bring your hook underneath our work, over that following double crochet, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and then that's it. We're going to continue to do our front and back post double crochets. When we don't have any more stitches left, we're going to slip stitch into that second chain that we made. Then we're just going to continue to repeat this row until we get the total height that we want our waistband to be. Now it could be two, three, five inches, whatever you guys want. I'll meet you guys back once we have that all finished up right after our chain up of one and cut. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up the height of my waistband. Now I have a total of seven rows and this height is just about two and a half inches or six centimeters. And now we're going to have to separate our right and our left leg panel and then also our cable stitch details. So let's all start by separating our leg holes. So separating our leg holes is gonna be pretty easy. We're gonna start by focusing on my light blue stitch markers. And we're all gonna start by inserting our stitch markers into the available stitches that we have on either side of our tail end. And then from there, we're all gonna count out half the amount of stitches that we have and then insert our stitch markers into those two stitches and we should all have two middle stitches since we should all have an even number. So if you guys have my numbers, I had a total of 100 stitches or 100 chains that I made when I started this off. So my two middle stitch markers is into my 50th and 51st stitch. And just double check that we have the same amount of stitches on both sides of our stitch markers and then we can get started on our cable stitch detail. So let's go ahead and look at just one of our pant legs. Now this part may be a little bit different for everyone, so let's just talk you guys through it. Now in between my pant leg, 
I have a total of 50 stitches. So since it's an even number for me, I should have two middle stitches. If you guys have an odd number of stitches in between your pant legs, you will have one middle stitch, which is completely fine. Now the amount of stitches that we need to have for the cable stitch detail is going to be the same for everyone. So for those of us that have two middle stitches, what we are going to do is start by counting our middle stitch and then count outwards a total of seven stitches in one direction. So for me, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Insert your stitch marker into there. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, starting with our falling middle stitch marker. So again, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So for those of us that have two middle stitches, we should have a total of 14 stitches in between our stitch markers, and that is going to be our cable stitch detail. Now for those of you that just have one middle stitch, you guys are completely fine as well. So what you guys are gonna do is count six stitches in each direction, making sure that you are not counting your middle stitch, and then insert your stitch marker into there. So for those of you that have just one middle stitch, you guys will have 13 stitches in between your stitch marker stitches. Now, once we have that down, we're gonna be doing the same thing on the other side of our pant leg, and then we can all get started on our cable stitch detail. Now, getting started on our cable stitch detail, this first row may be just a little bit different for everyone, depending on how many middle stitches you had. So getting started for those of us that had two middle stitches, what we're going to do is insert our stitch marker into that cable stitch, stitch marker stitch. We can take out those two middle ones because we actually don't need those anymore. You're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and start with a chain two. Now, like I said, for those of us that had two middle stitches, that chain two does count as a stitch for us. And what we're gonna do is work towards our other cable stitch detail stitch marker stitch, putting one half double crochet into every stitch. So we're all gonna yarn over, find that following stitch, making sure we're working towards our following stitch marker. Insert your hook into there. Yarn over, pull through. Once we have those three loops, we're gonna yarn over, pull through all three. There's our first half double crochet, let's just do one more. Yarn over, insert your hook into that following stitch, pull through, pull through all three. Now from here, continue to put one half double crochet into every stitch, including into that stitch marker stitch, and then counting that chain two that we started this row off with, we should have a total of 14 stitches. Now, for those of you that just have one middle stitch, what you guys are gonna do, since you guys technically have 13 stitches, after you guys do your chain two, that is gonna count as a stitch, but you're also gonna be inserting your first half double crochet into that same stitch that your chain two is in. So yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, so the same stitch marker stitch, with your first half double crochet, and then from there, put one half double crochet into every stitch until we have a total of 14 half double crochets, remembering to include your chain two. I'll meet you back at the end of this row one. All right, so our first half double crochet row is all finished up and our second row is also going to be a half double crochet row. So pretty simple. From here, we're going to chain two, flip our work and then just put one half double crochet into every stitch, remembering that our last half double crochet will be worked into that top of that chain two when we started off this section to have a total of 14 stitches. And from now on, the chain twos will not count as a stitch. We are back and we have just finished up our first two half double crochet rows. Now we're gonna get started on our row three or our first cable stitch row. So let's all start with a chain two and flip our work. So the sequence for our cables is going to be twist, dividing stitch, cable, dividing stitch, and twist. So let's get started on our first twist. After our chain two, we're gonna yarn over twice, preparing for a front post treble crochet. So yarn over once, yarn over twice. Now each of our cable stitch sections should be an odd number row, and it's going to be worked into our previous odd number row. So since we're working on row three, we're gonna be inserting our hook into row one. So taking a look at row one, to do our front post treble crochet, we're gonna find the first half double crochet from our previous row, making sure that we're not counting that chain two. And all we're gonna do is bring our hook down, and then underneath the body of that first half double crochet, and then through the other side. So basically the same as our front post double crochets. From here, we're gonna yarn over, pull through, and then we're gonna yarn over and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then from there, we're gonna be doing another front post treble crochet into that following half double crochet. So yarn over twice again, 
insert your hook underneath that following stitch through the other side. Pull through, pull through two, two, two. And then to finish off our twist, we're gonna do a front post double crochet into that stitch that we skipped. So into that chain two. We're going to yarn over twice, bring your hook underneath that first stitch or the chain two, insert your hook, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. Now that is our twist. Now right after our twist is going to be our dividing stitch, which is always going to be a front post treble crochet. So just yarn over twice, find that following available stitch, insert your hook underneath there through the other side, and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. Now that we have those four stitches all finished up, now we need to do our middle cable detail. So we're gonna start by doing a set of two front post double treble crochets. So now we're gonna yarn over three times. So yarn over one, two, three times. Still looking into row one, we're gonna skip the following two stitches. Here's one, here's two, and then into the third, we're gonna do our first front post double treble crochet. And all that is, is just yarning over and pulling through two until we have one loop left on our hook again. And then we're gonna do another front post double treble crochet into that following stitch, because our middle cable stitch section is always worked in sets of two. Now that we have those two stitches, we're gonna be working into those two stitches that we skipped, putting one front post double treble crochet into each of those as well. So yarn over three times, find that first stitch that we skipped, insert your hook underneath, pull through, pull through two, 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 and then one more into that other skip stitch that we have. So yarn over three times, insert your hook underneath that stitch, pull through, pull through, two, 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 and then two. Now to close off our middle cable stitch detail, we're gonna be doing two front post treble crochets into the following two stitches. So yarn over twice, find the following half double crochet from row one, insert your hook underneath there, pull through, pull through two, 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 and then one more into the following stitch. So yarn over twice. Into that next stitch, pull through, pull through two, 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 and that is our middle cable detail. And now we need to do our dividing stitch. So it's always gonna be a front post treble crochet, so just yarn over twice. Find that following stitch, pull through, pull through two, 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 and now that we have that, we can get started on our twist. So our starting twist and our ending twist is gonna be done exactly the same way. So start by yarning over twice, preparing for a front post treble crochet. Now we should all have three stitches left, so we're gonna skip that next stitch and then into that following, which is our second to last stitch from row one, Insert your hook into there, pull through, and continue to pull through two until we have one loop left. And then into that following stitch as well, which is the last stitch from row one. Insert, pull through. And then now our last stitch is going to be a front post treble crochet, but combined with a half double crochet so that our last stitch is nice and secure without adding an extra stitch to the entirety of the piece. So let's all start by yarning over twice. Now we should have one last available stitch or the third to last stitch from row one. Bring your hook underneath through the other side. Now from here, we're gonna yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. So we should all currently have four. We're gonna yarn over, pull through the first two for three loops, yarn over, pull through two for two loops. Now that we all have two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, insert, pull through. And now that we should all have four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four, and then that's it. Our row three is all finished up and each of our even number rows is going to be a half double crochet row. So just chain two, flip our work and then put one half double crochet into every stitch. All right, so I'm back and I have one, two, three, four rows all finished up. Now let's get started on a row five or our second cable stitch row. So right after this half double crochet row, we're always gonna chain two and flip our work. Now for every cable stitch row, it's gonna start off the same. So we're gonna do the same twist and same dividing stitch, so let's get that started. So like I said in one of our previous clips, each of our cable stitch rows is going to be worked into our previous odd number row. So since we're working on row five, we're gonna be inserting our hook into row three. So getting started on our twist, we're gonna yarn over twice. Now we're gonna skip that first stitch from our previous row, making sure that we're not counting that chain two, and then insert our hook underneath that second available stitch. Now it could be underneath our twist, so we might have to pry it out just a little bit like that, but all we're gonna do is insert a hook underneath the body of that stitch, 
pull through, pull through two, 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 and then one more into that following stitch. So yarn over twice into that following stitch, pull through, pull through two, 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 and then now for the twist portion, into that skip stitch, another front post treble crochet. So yarn over twice, insert your hook underneath, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, two, two. And now the twist is finished, so let's do our dividing stitch, which is always a front post treble crochet. So just yarn over twice, insert your hook underneath that stitch, pull through, pull through two, 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 and now our twist and dividing stitch is all finished up. Now getting started on our cable stitch detail for row five, we're going to start by doing one front post treble crochet into the following two stitches. So yarn over twice, into that next available stitch that we have, into row three, insert your hook underneath, Pull through with your first front post treble, and then another front post treble into that following stitch. Because remember, each of our middle cable stitch details is worked in sets of two. Now from here, we're going to be skipping the following two stitches, and then into the two stitches right after that, we're going to be putting one front post double treble crochet into each of those. So start by yarning over three times. We're going to skip one, skip two, into that following, one front post double treble crochet into there, into that following stitch, another front post double treble crochet. Now right after that, we're gonna be working into those two stitches that we skipped, but into that window that we made for ourselves. So getting this started, we're going to yarn over three times. What we're going to do is making sure that we're hanging on to our working yarn because it can very easily fall off. And then we're going to pull our work down, finding these two stitches, into that window. So go ahead and pull down, and these are my two skip stitches. Starting with this stitch right over here, bring your hook underneath, pull through, yarn over and continue to pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. And that's what it should look like so far. As you guys can see, it's underneath, and we have just one more left to do. So again, yarn over three times. Hang on to your working yarn and pull our work down, finding that last skip stitch in through that window, insert your hook underneath, through the other side, and pull through. And continue to pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. And that is our middle cable detail, and now let's do our dividing stitch, which is always a front post treble. And now that our front post treble is all finished up, the last thing we're going to have to do is our twist, which is going to be the same as our twist from our previous row. So just as a refresher, yarn over twice, preparing for a front post treble. We're going to skip that following stitch, and then into that second to last stitch that we have. We may need to pull it apart a little bit. Insert into there with your first front post treble. And then into the stitch right after that, so the last stitch from our previous cable row. Another front post treble. And then now the last treble crochet of the row is going to be a front post treble crochet combined with a half double crochet. So we should have one skip stitch and we're going to yarn over twice. Insert your hook underneath that last skip stitch that we have, pull through, and yarn over, pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Once we have those two loops, we are going to yarn over, insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row, yarn over, pull through. Once we have those four loops, yarn over, pull through all four, and then that is the end of our row five. Now, like I said, each of our even number rows is gonna be a half double crochet row. So from here, chain two, flip your work, and then put one half double crochet into every stitch. All right, so I'm back, and I now have a total of six rows all finished up. And now from here, it's going to be a repeat of rows three through six until we have the length of the shorts that we want. So I'm just gonna get started on the following row with you guys, just to remind you guys how it's gonna get started. So right after our half double crochet row, we're gonna chain two and flip our work. Now each of our cable stitch rows is always gonna start off with our twist and then our dividing stitch. So just to do that together really quickly, yarn over twice. Skip the first stitch from our previous cable stitch row, not counting that chain two and then insert your hook into that following stitch with your first front post treble. Insert your hook into that following stitch with another front post treble.
and then you're going to do a front post treble into that skip stitch, forming our twist. And then to do our dividing stitch, that is always, always, always going to be a front post treble crochet. So just into that next available stitch with a front post treble. And then getting started on a row seven, it's going to be a repeat of row three. So just as a quick refresher, we're going to start with a set of two front post double treble crochets. So yarn over three times. We're going to skip the following two stitches into that following stitch insert with one front post double treble crochet and then another front post double treble crochet into that following stitch because remember each of our stitches when it comes to our middle cable detail is worked in sets of two. And then that's it. If you guys need a refresher on how to do each cable, each of those timestamps will be linked in the description. But now from here, all we're going to do is continue to repeat rows three through six until we have the length of the shorts that we want. So I'm going to be placing my waistband where I want my waistband to be on me, so high waisted. So I'm just going to continue on ending on a cable stitch row until I have the desired length, keeping in mind that we will have a little bottom border as well. And once we have that all finished up, I will meet you guys back. I am back and I have just finished up the length of my cable stitch detail. Now counting from my first half double crochet row all the way until where I ended, I have a total of 33 rows and this length is just about 10 inches or 25 centimeters and my total length is currently 12 and a half inches or 32 centimeters. Now we're going to fill in the rest of this side of our pant leg with back loop slip stitches. So the first row is actually going to have to be single crochets to clean up the edges. Let's get that started. What we're going to do from here is chain one and we're all going to start by working into the side of our cable stitch detail alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row. So let's all start by finding our first available side row. Now since our last row should have been a cable stitch row, our side row should be this stitch right over here and we're just going to insert our hook into that top loop with a single crochet. Now our following side row should be our side half double crochet row. If you flip your work underneath you can see that solid row is our half double crochet. So I'll find that top loop and then insert your hook into there with two single crochets. So there's one and then into that same top loop with my second and let's just do one more set together. So this is my following side row. I'm going to insert my hook into there with just one single and then into my following side row with two singles. So there's one and then into that same with a second. And we're going to continue to do this, make my way all the way down until we reach the base. Now I've just made my way all the way down with my single crochet row. Now we need to connect it into the base. So all we're going to do is find that next available stitch into the base which should be the stitch that's right next to our stitch marker stitch. We're going to insert our hook into there to close off this row. And now that this row is closed off, we need to work our way up to the following row. So we're going to find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, and then flip our work. Now that our work is flipped, we're going to be doing back loop slip stitches all the way down. So let's do the first one. Find the last stitch from our previous row, and then we're going to insert our hook only into that back loop. So insert, yarn over, and pull through everything on our hook. That's how we do a back loop slip stitch. Let's do another one. Insert your hook into that following stitches back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. So pretty simple. We're going to continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we reach the base so that we can connect it together just once more. And a really quick tip that I have when it comes to doing our back loop slip stitches is make sure that after we finish every stitch, we're not accidentally tugging too tightly on our working yarn. Otherwise, the following row could be a little too tight to work into. So get this row and the following row finished up, and I'll meet you back at the base. All right, so I'm back, and I just made my way all the way down with my back loop slip stitch row, did a chain one, flipped my work, and then made my way all the way back up with the second back loop slip stitch row. Now that we're back at the base, we're just going to connect it once more. So what we're going to do is find that next available stitch, insert your hook into there to close off this row, and then we're going to find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into that stitch to work our way up to the following row, and flip our work. And then from here, it's going to be a repeat. So find the last stitch from our previous row, insert with a back loop slip stitch, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and then repeat. We aren't going to be doing any increases or decreases for any of our back loop slip stitch rows. We're just going to continue to do this until we reach 
our pant leg stitch marker stitch. Once when our last row is worked into that stitch marker, we're going to do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. All right, so I am back and I have made my way all the way over to my stitch marker stitcher with my back loop slip stitch rows. Now I did do a chain up of one and cut, so now we're gonna get started on the other side. But just to remind you guys how we're gonna do this, we're going to be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of our cable stitch section, and then we're going to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, making our way all the way up. We're gonna slip stitch it into the base the same way we did it on this side, and then we're just going to repeat back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases until I reach this side stitch marker stitch right over here. And then once we do, go ahead and do a chain up of one and cut. So I am back and I have just finished up my side slip stitch rows on both sides of my cable stitch detail. Now from here, we're actually going to repeat everything that we just did here on the other side. So I'll let you guys get to it. I just want to remind you guys that make sure that your work is swept right side out, meaning the cable stitch section that we have is faced outwards because it's not reversible. But go ahead and get the cable, both side panels done, and then I will meet you guys back. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up both of my pant legs. And now from here, we're gonna start working on the inner thigh connector. So we're gonna to wanna to try on this piece, making sure that we're placing our waistband where we want our waistband to lay once we have our shorts finished. And we're gonna be inserting our stitch markers into both the front and the back portion of our pant legs right where our legs meet. Now, if you guys have my numbers, I've inserted my stitch marker into the 13th stitch from the bottom, and that length is just about three inches or eight centimeters. And I did that for both my panels, front and back, and now we're just going to single crochet from the front of the panel to the back. We aren't working across. So what we're gonna do is make sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, and insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch, and insert our yarn onto our hook. Now from here, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're just going to do back loop slip stitches all the way up until we reach our stitch marker. Once we do, chain one, flip our work, and then work our way back down. So we're just gonna do the first few together. Start by finding that first available stitch, insert your hook into that back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us, pull through everything into that following stitch's back loop, insert, and pull through. And we're just gonna to continue to do our back loop slip stitches with absolutely no increases and no decreases until this can stretch, because making sure that our work can stretch quite a bit from the front of our thigh, in between our legs, to the back of our pant leg. And then once we have that length, I will meet you guys back along the bottom so that we can seam everything together. So I am back with the length of my inner thigh portion. Now counting from our first back loop slip stitch row that we did, I have a total of 18 rows, and this length is just about three inches or eight centimeters unstretched. Now from here, we are going to seam it to the other side of this pant leg. So let's all start by making sure the work is slipped right side out, and then we're gonna insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of our pant leg. Now this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam, so what we're going to do from here is pull our working yarn through our loop, and then we're going to do a chain up of one to secure. Now let's do our first one together. Let's all start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel, and then we're gonna insert our hook only into that front loop or the loop that's nearest to us. And then into the back panel, we're gonna find that next available stitch, and then insert only into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. And then once we have those three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. Now there's our first stitch, let's do the next one. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook in through that front loop, next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, pull through all three, let's just do one more, next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop, next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back. Yarn over, pull through everything. And we're gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the inner thigh portion. When we don't, do a chain up a one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up the inner thigh for both of my pant legs and now we're going to seam everything together down the middle. So this is going to be a single crochet seams. So first things first, make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out. Once when it's flipped wrong side out, we're gonna be inserting our hook into those two stitches that we should have into the band that is in the middle of the right and the left pant leg. And we're gonna be inserting our hook into each of those stitches 
and we're doing that so that we don't have any gaps when it comes to seaming everything together. Now from there, go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through. We can take out these stitch markers now because we do not need them anymore, and then we're going to single crochet both of our sides together. So within the front panel right here, we're all going to start by finding that first available stitch into there and insert your hook. Now right after that, we're going to find that first available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook in through there, and then we're going to single crochet everything together. And that's it. It's pretty simple, so let's do the next one. Find that next available stitch into the front panel, insert your hook in through there. We're going to find that next available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook in through there, and then single crochet. That's pretty much it. We're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way down. And then once we reach our inner thigh portion, I will meet you guys back because we're going to be working into our side rows. Alright, so I just made my way all the way down with my single crochet seam, and now I have made my way to my middle connector. And now we're going to continue on with our single crochet seam, but now we have some side rows to work into. So we're going to want to make sure that one of our pant legs is faced up towards us so that it's folded in half. We're going to peel this side back and then we're going to pinch these two ends together so that our seam is along the inside. So I'm going to take my front panel, my back panel, and then just pinch it together and all we're going to do is one single crochet into every side row working into both the front and the back panel at the same time. So let's do that together. Now if we pull this apart just a little bit, you guys can see that this is my first side row that I have right here when it comes to our middle connector. So I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop. Within the back panel, we're going to find that first available row as well, which this is mine right here within the back panel. Insert my hook into there, and then single crochet them together. So pretty simple. Let's just do one more. Now my following side row is this divot right here, so I'm going to find that top loop within the front panel and then find my following side row within the back panel, which is this divot within the back panel. Insert my hook into that top loop, single crochet, and then that is pretty much it. We're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into, and then when we don't, we should still have some stitches to work into, working our way back up the back half of our pants. Pretty much the same way that we did our single crochet seam, working our way down our shorts. So continue to do that until we have worked our way all the way up to our waistband, and then once when we have, slip stitch into the waistband, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. Alrighty, so I am back and I have just finished up seaming the entirety of our shorts, as you guys can see. And now that we have this all finished up, we're going to be working on the bottom band. So as you guys can see, I've already finished up one of mine, so we're going to do the other one together. So we're all going to start off by making sure that our work is flipped right side out. And then we're going to insert our hook into any side row that we have along the inside of our inner thigh. Now this is going to be pretty simple. All we're going to do is single crochet along the entirety of our pant leg. So now that our hook is in through any one of our side rows, we're just going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side row. So let's all start off by finding our first side row. Mine is this raised row right over here. I'm going to find that top loop insert my hook with a single crochet. Let's do the next one. Find our following side row. Mine is this divot right here, so find that top loop, and then single crochet. That's basically it. We're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way around, but just as a quick tip, once we reach right underneath our cable stitch detail, we will have regular stitches to work into, so just put one single crochet into each of those. Make your way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space, and then I will meet you back. All right, so our single crochet row along the bottom of our pant legs all finished up. Now we're going to prepare for our front and back post double crochets. So our row two is going to be just a double crochet row. So right after we have slip stitched into that chain space, we're going to chain three, and then make our way all the way around, putting one double crochet into every stitch. Once we don't have any more stitches left to work into, slip stitch into that third chain, and I will meet you back to do our front and back post doubles. All right, so I am back. My double crochet row is all finished up, and now the bottom band is just going to be rows and front and back post double crochets. So pretty much the same way that we did our waistbands. So let's just do the first two stitches together. We should have all already slip stitched into that third chain, so now we're going to chain two. 
We're going to yarn over, preparing for a front post double crochet, and we're going to find the first double crochet from our previous row, not that chain three. Insert your hook underneath the body of that double crochet with a front post, and then yarn over, bring your hook underneath our piece for a back post, and that is it. Alternate between a front and back post double crochet, making our way all the way around. Slip stitch into that second chain that we made to close off this row, and then repeat. So just chain two, and then continue. Repeat this front and back post double crochet row until we get the height of the bottom band that we want. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. So my bottom band on both sides are all finished up. I have a total of four rows, and that is including my single crochet row, and this is just about an inch and a half or three centimeters. Now from here, we are almost done. We now just need to make a chain that can wrap around the widest part of our hips, plus adding maybe about 10 inches in total right after that so that we have enough slack to tie our bow. Now I have already made mine. I made a total chain of 175. Now from here, we're going to weave it into our waistband, so let's get started. Now you guys can use a tapestry needle, your fingers, or your hook, whatever you guys prefer, but we just wanna make sure that our band is being worked in through the same row, making our way all the way across, because otherwise it can be a little crooked. But all I'm gonna do is find that middle row, which this is my middle row right over here. I'm gonna figure out where I want my drawstring to be, either high, low, or in the middle. I want mine in the middle. So I'm just going to insert my hook into there. That is the tool that I choose. Insert my chain, and then pull through. And then from here, find the same loops, and then just continue to weave it through. Just gonna continue to do this, making my way all the way around until I reach the middle row on the other side, and then we will be all done. All right, so I've just woven my drawstring all the way through, and I am all done. Last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. All of those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.